why do we plan and do we always plan in the same way? Why do we plan? Would anyone like to volunteer and answer that question? Yes, sir. Don't plan, don't know where you're going. And in, as uh, you've already heard from Dr. Schofield this morning, in times when the budgets are pretty tight, we need to know exactly where we're going because we don't have any fuel to, to waste. And do we always plan the same way? Do you plan the same way, for example, when you're going to the grocery store? It is seldom critical, and you have the ability to repeat. How many times, well, I won't ask you, I will just tell you, that I have been to the grocery store many times for one thing, come home with five things and not the one thing I went for, and I'm seeing some amens out there. But it's okay. Don't panic. Just go back. It's not critical. And they're short-term and very narrow and focused. So go going to the grocery store is not a major planning event. If you're going to the mountains for a long weekend, it's a little more tricky. You know, you don't want to get up there without a, cold, without a coat if it gets cold up there. Sometimes you can repeat things. You know, you could, um, if you've forgotten your medicine, you can probably find another Rite Aid and they can get your prescription filled. But sometimes it's, it is critical. You're going to go to China for three weeks and you leave your medicine at home, there's not a thing you can do about it. You might be able to get it, the prescription refilled in China, but you're not going to want to take the pills anyway because you're not going to be sure what they are. So. It's critical. And that's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about the kind of, strategic, uh, kind of planning that's operational. What am I going to teach today? What am I going to say in this meeting? We're talking about strategic planning, the stuff that is critical, that you can't repeat. If you miss the boat, you've missed it. That's the level that we're talking about. And here's the strategic planning pyramid that the Georgia School Board Association uses and we use in our presentations. And you see at the top of the pyramid, everything is driven by the mission, vision, and principles. And on the right-hand side, you see the essential questions. Many of you are very, very familiar with this. So I just wanted to, to give you this overview. This is uh, getting deeper into it now. There are basically three levels of planning, strategic, tactical, and operational. Operational is what you do every day. But we're talking about strategic planning. What's, what are the big ideas? What are the things we want to accomplish? We used to talk about five to ten year horizons, but more and more we talk about a three to five year horizon, and I'll, I'll give you a um, reason for that. Think about what your cell phone looked like ten years ago. In, in a big bag, kind of thing. You know. Do we want to go back to that? No. Wonder what our cell phones are going to look like in ten years from now. Not like what they are now. So. You know, things are happening so fast. We, we're now talking about a three to five year horizon. And <clears throat> this is the uh, level of planning that we're at, the, the top level of the pyramid. And that's driven by the belief, mission, and vision. It's taking into consideration external and internal factors. And the purpose of it is to create a future for our students to deal with the future needs of our students. We're building their future. We're not talking about our past. So it's very, very different. Operationally, teachers are presenting in the classroom what students need to know now. But when we're doing strategic planning, it's a different ballpark. We're looking at the future. So those are some things to keep in mind as we go through this. There are four levels of strategic plans. Now, this is... Um, generally accepted in strategic planning, that you have the big ideas all the way down to the action steps. And they come down in levels. Now, when we're talking about strategic plans, we're talking about the strategic goals and performance objectives. Now, some school districts also include initiatives in the strategic part. And I'm going to give you an example of that in just a minute. So that's kind of a, a crossover piece. These are just some examples of four strategic goals. Most school systems have either three, four, or five. Once you get above five, you really can't focus. It's just too many. And two is not enough. So everything that happens in a school system can fall into these four areas. And like I say, some school systems have three, some have five. This is just an example. 
And these are just some common examples of what those four strategic plans are. And again, what we're showing you today fits exactly into the e-board structure. So these would be your, the, the four strategic goals, and you could put those in that first level. Here's a little bit more information. Levels one and two, strategic goals and performance objectives, are the same at the district and school level. Now, I was working in, do we have anyone in Houston County here? I was working with the school board in Houston County a couple of three weekends ago, and they include level three initiatives in their strategic areas. They are the same at the district and school level. So there's a little flap over there. But level four action steps are always school or department specific. They're the ones that change. One of the ways that we talk about this is that level one are chipped into stone with a chisel. Level four are written in pencil because you can change them all the time. Need to. Half time and your team's losing. You've got to change up the strategies. Well, it's the same thing with the action steps. So the levels are there. <clears throat> We're going to come back to that. Cascading the plan. We're talking in this session about how do you use a strategic plan to align work. One of the frustrating things about writing a plan is when you know it's just going to get put on the shelf, call them dust plans, you know, dust it off every year, or when SACS comes in, bring it out again, and, and that's, that's not productive. It's just a waste of time. So how do we make a strategic plan useful? How do we align it with what's actually happening in the school system? And we do it through cascading it. That's the term we use to cascade it out. If you think about a waterfall, you think about all the force of the water cascading down. And that's what you want with a strategic plan. You want to cascade down into every classroom so we're all aligned, all focused. And this kind of cascading improves alignment between and among the schools. And it Im improves alignment between the district and schools. It helps everybody mesh better together. It also helps us to identify gaps. When we're all working off the same page, if something's not on the page, then it's not on the page. We can't think, well, it's in another plan somewhere else. It's not. So this helps you to identify gaps and resources, and it helps us to focus, helps us to focus. So this is what it can look like. You have the district strategic plan, and usually the central office improvement plan is very, very much like that, just a, an expansion of it. And then you have elementary, middle, and high school plans, all with the same four strategic goals, all with the same performance objectives. For example, student mastery of curriculum. That's everybody's job, right? It doesn't matter whether you're pre-K or IB or AP. You want the students to master the curriculum. Now, the way you go about that may be very different, but the strategic goal is the same. 